Okay. You're watching, as I've said, uh, for those who were on earlier, you're watching LaRouche Pack Saturday Evening Class Series. Bruce Director, who's sharing the screen with me, and I have begun a multi-part uh, class on LaRouche's Science and Economics. The first part uh, was about what is science, um, uh, science gives you the way to show that what everybody thinks is wrong. You can find that class uh, on the front at the moment on the front page of larouchepack.com website. Um, the uh, so tonight's is the second in the series. It's going to be presented by Bruce Director from Virginia. I'm joining you from Michigan, and uh, he's given it the title to improve the economy improve the mind so let's get out of the way and let him start <laughs> okay well thank you tony um I, I intend to make a few brief opening remarks and have a back and forth with tony and then open it up to discussion um the quote that tony just read we put out in the email uh came from a conversation i had with lyndon larouche uh i think in the either the late 1990s or the early 2000s uh, in that time period uh, in a discussion we were having, uh, uh, and it stuck with me, and I'll tell you why. Uh, as a good summary of really what is the essence of economics, you have to get that part right before you can get anything else uh, about economics uh, into line. And that's really why I emphasized it and why I think it's important for us to talk about uh, and to get other people around us and throughout the country and especially more broadly in the MAGA movement to start thinking about, because that's uh, really the main thing that we have to get right, or at least uh, over the next very short period of time uh, in order to improve our society. and more broadly, the rest of the world. <clears throat> now, we were discussing at the time uh, the period between the death of Leibniz and uh, the American Revolution. And uh, we were talking about the developments in, in the area of uh, Hanover, which at that time was a separate kingdom uh, in, a, in the German-speaking area. Uh, was before Germany was unified. Leibniz had spent time in Hanover uh, working with it, in the library there, the Royal Library. And he was also the teacher of the heiress to the throne, Sophie Charlotte, who, and the Kingdom of Hanover was connected by various royal titles to the the uh, British crown, the, the, the English crown, or the crown of the United Kingdom. Uh, in fact, George I and the, the kings at the time and during the American Revolution came from Hanover. And uh, so there was this relationship. And in fact, because of that relationship, Leibniz would have been in line to possibly become the prime minister of England had Sophie Charlotte, his student, ascended to the throne of England. She died and, and did not uh, achieve that position. Uh, in any case, uh, there was something that went on that was initiated by Leibniz and also his, uh, with the support of the royal family of Hanover uh, to um, basically uh, make a, a shift in the policy of the uh, educational policy of the kingdom, which had previously been uh, limited to, to the children of noble families. If you were not from a noble family, your education was limited to what we today we would call vocational training or apprenticeships or something like that. And he set up uh, a, a lot, Leibniz didn't, didn't wasn't the person who set it up, but Leibniz initiated in some of his 
successors initiated the establishment of a school called the Collegium Carolineum, uh, and it was headed up by a man named Zimmermann, uh, which, whose purpose was to provide a classical education for uh, children who were not from noble families. And um, uh, one of the main students, or one of the most famous students that came out of this uh, was Carl uh, um, Friedrich Gauss. Also Leibniz's successor at the library, Gotthold Lessing, who was a famous um, playwright, uh, 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 was one of the people involved in setting up the school. And another person who was involved in this was a man named um, Kessner. And Kessner was uh, also at Göttingen University, which was at the higher level school that was set up by Leibniz and Leibniz's successors. And Kessner was the host of Benjamin Franklin when Benjamin Franklin visited Germany prior to the American Revolution. And there's a direct connection, therefore, between uh, what was taking place in Hanover at the impetus of Leibniz and his successors and the uh, American Revolution. And when we were discussing this, uh, Lynn said, yes, they had the concept that if you want to improve society, you have to improve the mind. And so they set about a policy that would create improvement in the minds of their citizens, not out of some uh, just simple benevolence that this would be a good thing to do, but very deliberately in order to uh, improve the society. Now, I want to point out a kind of a paradox, which we might come back to several times in the discussion and in the question period, that this is not to say that everything was going well for, for people or in the Kingdom of Hanover, or the Kingdom of Hanover was, was organized as a uh, ideal society. And this is something, I think Tony mentioned it or pointed to it, it was, or you could draw the conclusion from the discussion we had last week, that uh, changes in society and improvements and so forth take place over very long uh, ranges of history. Um, we focused last week, for example, on the 20th century, which on the one hand, if you look back on it, was uh, a period that was pretty uh, bad in terms of you know, what happened to mankind during that last 100, 120 years uh, with uh, two, two hot wars, one cold war, and many, many, many small wars, which were all uh, part of that. Um, uh, and very little original groundbreaking scientific discoveries, except those that occurred at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, like Planck and Einstein. But nevertheless, there was a certain amount, in fact, a very large amount of progress that went on. So you have to ask yourself a question. Uh, I think, I don't know really if you have to ask yourself a question. What you really have to do is yes. to confront oneself on the simplistic way one tends to think about history and the dynamics of economics and the dynamics of society. Things are not all good or all bad. There are countervailing processes going on all the time. This does, and, and therefore the kind of pessimism, which I think hinders our progress today, uh, that tends to catalog all the assaults on the human mind, all the things that are happening to degrade the human mind can give one a false uh, pessimism. At the same time, if you ignore the those things that are going on and just focus on, uh, you know, new technologies or something like that, 
uh, you can get a false sense of optimism. So I think one of the exercises I, I, I hope that this discussion does is to, to help people give up that kind of um, Aristotelian illusion about the dynamics of history. But this idea that LaRouche or the summary uh, saying that LaRouche coined in that discussion um, is, uh, is very important be and, and because it actually is the kind of uh, problem that mankind has been grappling with throughout all our recorded history and also in periods that go back before we have really good records. Um, and that you can see evidence of a struggle of mankind to improve his understanding of the mind, of his own mind, and also the relationship of his own mind to uh, the world outside himself. I mean, one example of this is uh, the study of uh, the mastery, uh, as Prometheus said, uh, when he is recounting what he did for mankind, uh, he in Prometheus uh, bound Aeschylus's play, he said, you know, I taught man the rising and the setting of the stars, which is hard to discern, uh, number and poetry. Um, and before that, man was living like animals. Uh, and, and if you just think about that, what, what does it mean to master the rising and setting of the stars, poetry, number? These are improvements in the mind which have a physical impact on man's relationship to nature. Uh, for example, with the rising and the setting of the stars, without an understanding of that, of astronomy, uh, you can't have agri uh, organized agriculture. You can't have transoceanic navigation, which we have plenty of evidence occurred in ancient times. Um, uh, the question of poetry and so forth, I've always been quite um, fascinated by, not just by ancient poetry, but by thinking about what kind of conversations did ancient man have among themselves? What kind of jokes did they tell each other? What kind of stories about uh, history or legends? We know some of them in fragmentary uh, form. Uh, or you take the paintings, the cave paintings in Spain and, and France, um, which show uh, a man's uh, effort to um, uh, discover uh, and explore and convey concepts about the nature of the world in which he lives. Uh, and so really, the history of mankind and the history of, of economics, and not just the history, but the actual substance of it, is trying to figure out the solution to the paradox that LaRouche characterized as, if you want to improve society, you have to improve, you have to uh, improve the mind. I guess one could, if one were really pessimistic, one could say, why does anybody want to improve society? But I would say that's an inherent uh, characteristic of mankind, which is not characteristic of any other species. Um, so that's one thing to, to, to think about, how did that happen? And if you look at uh, you know, the struggle in, in philosophy and general ideas about this, this was, for example, the uh, the issue that Plato um, that Plato struggled with in the Republic, because how do you improve the qualities of the mind? Because there's an element to this which ha which requires, uh, which is a sovereign discovery by individuals. Um, it can't be compelled. You can't create a set of rules or regulations that will ensure that the mind 
it, uh, the mind of man Im improves. Uh, Plato struggled with this and tried to come up with a concept of the Republic that had a, various ideas about education, about creating philosopher kings and, and so forth. Um, but as you can see from the history of Greek society, that really didn't solve the problem. Uh, you had another, uh, I think, major development in that direction, you can see in the writings of St. Augustine uh, in the Confessions and Augustine's contemplations of how do we get out of this hell of the Roman Empire, which on the one hand, the intellectuals in the Roman Empire considered themselves as improving science and the mind, even though the culture was completely degenerate. Um, and Augustine uh, struggles with this question in the Confessions. Uh, then you have the great breakthroughs that were uh, uh, efforts in my mind that really dealt with this question was uh, Cusa in the uh, 15th century, uh, and that led to the Renaissance. Uh, here's an interesting thing that struck me recently about the Renaissance. I was looking at some historical materials about the Medicis and the state of Florence. And when we think about the Renaissance, we imagine these beautiful pictures of the Dome of Florence or the works of Leonardo or Donatello, Raphael, great works of art. Uh, the population of Florence during that period was around 45,000, size of a, the little town I live in here in, in Virginia, Leesburg, town of a small city. Uh, it was really screwed up politically, financially, economically, culturally. Uh, and yet, think about the great geniuses that came out of in that very concentrated period. Uh, small area and concentrated period of time, um, which radiated out beyond that uh, and had a definite improvement in society as a result of what was what developed out of there um, and including the discovery or the rediscovery of the Americas. Uh, and then you had uh, you think about the period that I was talking to LaRouche about uh, after Leibniz, who, who devoted much of his uh, attention, and you can read in his writings about this question that you, uh, the key to economics and development is improving the characteristics of the mind. And he, like Plato, Cusa, Augustine, emphasized that one, in order to do that, one had to break from the idea of, uh, of sense perception as being real and recognize that what is real is not what you perceive, but the ideas you generate uh, provoked by what you prov provoked by contradictions between what you perceive and your existing ideas that lead to the discovery of new concepts of man and nature. And this applies both in art and in science itself, physical science, biological sciences, and so forth. And in that period, you know, the question was, how do we get this right? Uh, and I think we got it right uh, in the founding of the American Revolution, which, as I mentioned earlier, is directly connected to this period in Germany. Uh, that LaRouche and I were talking about. That the people who ultimately colonized North America and ultimately created the United States as a constitutional republic uh, did so for the purpose of creating a society based on that principle of improving the mind. And this is the... Um, uh, enshrined in our Constitution and in the uh, Declaration of Independence and in the preamble of the Constitution. And all history, as LaRouche emphasized, since that uh, uh, time, world history and world events has been uh, governed solely by that uh, question of can a 
nation organized on that basis uh, not only survive, but prosper and grow. And that's really what the issue is today. Uh, so I think this just uh, illustrates uh, that this is what's lacking in all the discussions of economics. You can have a lot of discussion about um, uh, technology, different technologies, different uh, approaches to uh, financing, the difference between a monetary system and a credit system. But none of that works unless you get the first part right. Why are you creating these economic this form of economic organization. You're creating it and it has to be created because these are the, the bases on which you can make, uh, uh, you can get improvements in the mind. So uh, I think that's kind of a opening salvo and maybe we can get into more detail in our discussion.